the patient's arm. Now, I have a really strong feeling he's not going to be difficult to find, so I'm just going to use regular saline. Bingo, look at that. Oh, beautiful. He's got a good basilic tracking all the way down, turns into a brachial. Okay, we're looking for that hyperpigmentation, which is or hypopigmentation, which is right there. That's our midline, that's our green zone. And I'm going to enter there to hit that brachial right there. Okay. Looks good. You you doing okay? Yeah, I'm still waiting for the end of study. I know, right? I'm just talking so much. Maybe that'll make you fall asleep. <laughs> All right, so we are going to insert it about here, so I'm going to inject right there. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Here we go. Right there. Of course, measure twice, cut once as always. There we go. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Going for that intradermal wheel. How bad was that? Not bad. Do you mind turning on the lights for me? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Do you guys see that intradermal wheel? Okay. Any kind of burning? Very comfortable. Okay. You want to do it again? No, sir. <laughs> That's the right answer. How about now? So far, so good. Okay. So you guys can see that intradermal wheel developing and, and spreading as I inject. And I, you can tell I'm going slow. I'm going a lot slower than most of you guys probably do this and what I used to do. And I like to cover that entire area because I want to make sure he doesn't feel that dilator. All right, so now the little bit of lidocaine still saved up or most of it, we're going to do needle tracking. And then we're going to numb as we go. So this is the numb as you go technique. Talk to me about Matt Gibson. I like it. Some people don't believe in it, but whatever. Feel that? Not really. Not really. You guys heard that, right? Okay, so as we've seen, I'm going to show you also that the lidocaine will not be able to spasm his vein. How's that feel? Feels good. Okay. So see my needle point right there? Do you see that white line, ma'am? Mm -hmm. That's my needle tip. And this is why this procedure is so much safer now mm -hmm. because, and it's following the green line. Can you see that? Yes. Do you feel that? No. Nope. Good. So I'm numbing it all the way down and I'm injecting a little bit at a time. I'm not being very aggressive with my injection. Okay. So I really haven't hit the fascia yet, so I don't expect him to feel much of this anyways. But just in case, I like to numb the way down. That way the dilator's not um, squeezed by the uh, tissue. Not that there's much to squeeze, but how about now? No, sir. Good. Notice he's not feeling much above the fascia and under the subcutaneous, in the subcutaneous tissue. Okay. Now, about, let's see here, let's give it a little bit more distance. What about now? No, sir. No, good. So we got plenty of room, plenty of space. Now I lost track of my vein versus artery. Okay, there we go. So as you guys can see here, he's got a small nerve bundle to the top left of the artery, non-compressible, but maintaining its circular structure right above the artery. His arteries are so strong, look at that. It's pulsating a little bit, all right? Definitely a healthy guy in general. And the vein is on the right of it, so I'm finding my needle down. So if you lost your needle point, look for the shadow. You see how it's a little, a little bigger than a regular needle point? You're going to find its way down to where it disappears, and that's where your needle point is going to be. Okay, so I go up and then find my way back to my needle point, which is right there. Okay, so I'm going to keep, keep staying shallow at a lower angle because I want more tissue and space between the vein and the uh, insertion site. Okay, that'll help to decrease risk for infection as well. It's more distance for your bacteria to travel. All right, I'm, I'm assuming you feel this. No, sir. All right, let's numb that. And I have about one to two centimeters left. So I'm gonna start poking and entering the vein here. So he's got fascia here, and I'm, there's my needle tip. Okay, there's my needle tip there. 
And here's another trick you can do. Do you see me fanning and changing the angle of the probe? This is why I don't like the needle guides, because you can't do this. So, depending on the angle of your, of your needle, when you're more perpendicular with the needle, the more brighter the needle tip will be. The more perpendicular you are with the veins, the more the veins are going to be prominent in your image. Okay, so right now, I'm trying to relocate the tip of the needle, which I always recommend. Bingo. So I'm fanning it out a little bit. There's my tip. And luckily, I can see the vein pretty prominently there too. So I'm going to keep it, instead of 90 degrees from the skin, I'm going to get it 90 degrees from the needle, or as close to it as I can. Okay, so there's that. Injecting very close to the vein. And do you see any spasming? Because I don't. Okay, I just want to prove to you guys this is a misnomer. Okay, how, how'd that feel? Feels good. Yeah. Okay. About there. Feels good. Okay, good. So I'm not in the vein yet. And you'll see the fascia separating. How's that? Feel good. Okay, at this point, if I went too quickly, he might feel a little bit of burning. So there, I believe that's like one of the last layers of fascia. So I'm going to go ahead and try to enter the vein from here. My needle, needle tip that was pretty getting pretty deep. I'm gonna go ahead and puncture it. Bingo. Okay. And right now I'm actually not looking at the top longitudinal view. I'm looking at the cross section because I'm more comfortable with that. And that gives me more axis of direction with my needle. There we go. Bingo. Right there. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm in. I felt the pop earlier and look at that do you see that separation do you see that needle at the top ma'am mm -hmm. that's his needle inside of his vein oh wow okay so I like this view I like what I'm seeing everything's inside okay good and you guys are gonna watch as this area look at that blood return bingo so that venous pressure doesn't suck anything in it sucks every it pushes everything out that's why I'm not worried. And you, as you saw, you didn't see any vasospasms. And that's with the lidocaine. Okay. Right there. I'm really hoping his skin's not going to be very thick. So we are going to put this in, follow that through. It's thick. All right, you've been out in the sun a lot, huh, when you were younger? Yeah, I work in the sun every day. There you go. So, usually people with history of sun exposure have thicker skin. So what I'm gonna do is introduce the dilator first. And I'm gonna use this technique. I'm gonna actually hold on to this piece. Make sure it doesn't fall in, which it most likely doesn't. I'm gonna pull the skin this way. It's a little gruesome, but he's not gonna feel it, and that's why I numb very generously around that insertion site. We're we are going to pull this cat uh, dilator out this way, and I'm gonna pull the skin this way to stretch just a little bit of that insertion site so that the sheath and the dilator can go in smoothly, okay? So, because I have a feeling he's gonna be very tough skin. You could probably feel more of me pressing than anything else right you don't feel any sharp pain no sir okay go that way this way go this way okay okay i'm just trying to stretch that skin a little bit and that skin will reform and close that site better over time that's that let's see Woo! look at that Fortunately, with these barred catheters or these dilators, I heard Arrow had some issues too. All right, so now let's watch as this goes in. Look at that. Wow. So much smoother. You saw me struggling with it mm -hmm. earlier, right? Yes. Now, no problem. Okay, cool. So that is done. I'm going to release the tourniquet or else there will be a nice gush of blood. Not to be worried. Just plug your thumb over if that happens. 
and uh, use your stopper or your syringe to stop the blood flow. There we go. Okay, there we go. Look at that beautiful blood return. We are good. All right, now I had the catheter cutting at the 49. Okay, so we're gonna remove the guide wire or the stylet from here. And then we're gonna cut at the 49. Here we go. Bingo. Cutting up the 49. I like to use a scalpel more than I'd like to use a scissor because I think scissors, there's been a study um, on scissors having more jagged edges with their cuts and also their. So here you guys can see the tip of the stylet. It's just a little bit different exposed metal. It's to help identify the location of the tip with the 3CG Sherlock, uh, Sherlock 3CG paddle. Uh, that way it lets you know if you're going up or down or across so you know the direction of where the catheter is going. Okay, so boom, gonna feed it through. Now while it's feeding through, I'm gonna stop it right there because I do wanna recalibrate my, this is my extra hand, sterile hand. This is a sterile equipment. Do that and I'm gonna throw it away because it's no good. And I should have done it twice. <laughs> so give it a little flush before you calibrate so that the saline is having good contact with the stylet and the rest of the blood. And I'm going to slowly push it in little by little. And I have a good feeling it's going to drop nice for me. Oh. oh there we go. All right, here you can see that the lollipop is not moving down as I would hope it to. It just means that the magnets in the paddle are not catching the tip of the catheter. That's fine because the most important part is the EKG anyways. So the EKG will still read the electrical conduction of the stylet and the SA node. So you know how close or if you're getting closer to the SA node with your catheter tip. We'll wait for it to settle. Can you give me a good cough? <laughs> okay. If you see that there's a lot of variability or artifact in the EKG, getting them the cough helps to reposition that catheter so that the tip is closer to the SA node. I saw a little bit of an inversion. I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Okay, now the P wave is not exacerbating, so it's a little bit out of place. So I'm gonna push it in by one centimeter and see where it lands. So I'm looking for a nice big P wave. Zero, but I see a little bit of inversion. Okay. Try pulling just a little bit. There we go. So just a second ago, you saw that negative deflection or inversion, and that let us know that we were past the SA node. And so I had to pull back to get max P wave to confirm good tip confirmation near or at the cavo atrial junction. Yeah, a little better. Okay. He's got a big heart. Okay, good. So as you can see, my P wave is exacerbated perfectly, indicating a good placement, which is gonna be at, I've got to cut five. I'm five, I'm five long. So, capture that for me. Bingo, all right, cool. So five long, what I'm gonna do is cut five centimeters, actually, one, two, three, I'm gonna pull one. So I'm gonna cut four centimeters to have it perfectly placed, okay? There we go. Stop that from bleeding. Bingo. I'm gonna cut about four more centimeters. There we go, we are at, we're gonna cut to the 45, okay? From here, put this back, and what I like to do a lot of times is, all right, see the original, original placement of that tip. I'm gonna use, pull it here at the stopper. Boom, right about there, okay. So now my 45, I do like to wipe this off a little bit to prevent any possible thrombus developing around the catheter. Um, and getting it wet does help with that. I like to clean clean the blood off before applying to prevent 
potential thrombus developing around that dried. Is there studies on what I'm saying? No, just anecdotal. It's a guess from all the other sciences that I kind of know. So I'll double check if you're really concerned about wiping it. All right, here we go. So what I'm going to do is exchange it immediately. And then again, re-inject the saline to re-engage good contact. And then we're going to watch as it drops. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Bingo. It's going in a good place. All right. So we're going to put that at zero. Let's see what happens. Good deal. We got good placement right there. I love seeing green. Okay. From here, we're going to cut at the 40. We've cut at the 45. We're going to um, pull at the one. And that should be enough. Okay. Now with that, I like to wipe the blood, just to make things clean. It's not that much, which is good. How you feeling so far? Great. Nothing to it, right? So far. Yeah, good. Bingo. All right, so now take the stylet out because we don't need it. That is gone. Clamp. And then exchange for the lure lock, okay? And then double check, good flow, good flashback, good flush, we are done, okay? So now, when you put this on, make sure these markers are up so that the person dressing, the, um, changing the dressing can mark that more easily and document more easily. All right, this is my favorite part, bio patch. So I didn't have any uh, CHG dressing yet on me but the bio patch remember this is what I keep saying don't be a dummy don't do this okay if you think this is gonna make it more secure you're dead wrong and you've obviously never changed these dressings before so let's be intelligent be smart and do what what these bio patch uh, recommend and do it this way okay bingo right at the slit that's what you need to do. Don't get creative. So that's the recommendation. Oh, don't forget the stat lock. So what I like to do is use a skin prep to make it more comfortable. Bingo. Don't worry about that sound. It's just being, I forgot to turn it off. Okay. I hope that tape doesn't hurt so much. Not at all. Good, good, good. Yeah. I think it also helps. He has, he has a high tolerance for pain. Usually when I rip, when I take off that tape, people complain about it. But he has been through more pain in his life than most. That's good. That makes you stronger, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Bingo. Okay, pull at one. Cut at the 45. That's it. It's there, settled in. What I'm going to do is at this perforated edge, I'm going to carefully rip it off. Jeez. Bingo. Expose my area so that I can put this tape on more comfortably and more correctly. Bingo. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It looks beautiful if I do say so myself. Felt good. Good, good. We'll do it again in five minutes. All that you gotta get on the table. <laughs> I know, right? Couples who do things together stay together, yes. right? Didn't say exactly what they do together, <laughs> but. And then we're gonna date and time that. Of course, you guys know how to do that. All right. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Love to show you guys how to do these things and uh, answer any questions you have about. It. Okay. What was the worst part? Waiting for the pain. Oh, okay. <laughs> you said waiting for the pain? Okay, good, good, good. I'm happy.